Hey, what is going on, everybody? How are you doing? It is another episode of Millennial with Billy and Mel. What is going on, guys? It, like I said, it's Friday, so it's it's just another episode, right? And it's gonna be a great episode because we're gonna be talking about giving advice, taking advice. We've all done it, and especially uh, when you're receiving advice. Often or not, you don't listen to it. But <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're gonna get more into that today. So, but if you are jumping on the live today, uh, I see a couple of you. Make sure you let us know where you're coming in from. We'd love to give you a shout out. We'd love just to have you interact. Right? Tell us about the best piece of advice that you've ever gotten, and maybe the worst piece of advice that you've ever gotten. So we'd love to see that. And if you're gonna be jumping on the replay. Just make sure you let us know you you jumped on so we can come back on here and give you guys a shout out. So, but anyways, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Giving advice, taking advice, the good, the bad, the ugly. So Mel, before we get into all that, how are you doing? How's your week been? What's going on? Oh man, week's good. Um, not my allergies, however. Um, if anybody else woke up the last couple of days with a sore throat, or um, a congested or runny nose. Um, it is not just you. It is every like every day. I talk to people that are going through really bad allergies. The pollen's really bad. So I thought I was getting sick, and now I feel better that um, it wasn't just me. But I really want to enjoy the outdoors today, <laughs> tomorrow. But I think I'm going to be staying inside, um, and I have to take apparently um, allergy pills again. I used to get shots, so. Um, so yeah, but um, Hershey Park is testing all their rides, so that's cool. They're gonna open next weekend, so um, there's a lot you know going on outside. It's um, it's getting to be spring and summer. I'm excited. So, yeah, feeling good, busy, but um, I've been getting to bed early. I've been getting up earlier. You know, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah that's better habits here. That's awesome. Yeah, and so uh, you know. You probably don't want to go outside today anyways, even though it's nice outside. The wind, I don't know if it's like this like this in Harrisburg, but it is like 30 mile an hour winds. I felt like I had to tie Bear down to the ground when he went outside. I didn't know if he was going to fly away or not. <laughs> so, um, I got your gift. Your gift I came. I saw that. I'm so excited uh, for the 10X book. I'm ready. Uh, it, it was actually kind of before we kind of get into the advice thing, you know, it, it was kind of perfect timing that I'm getting that book because uh, like, I guess the beginning of March, I hit that big goal that I've been trying to hit. And I kind of just like, I don't know, like pumped off the, the gas a little bit. And so now I'm saying, well, you know, the next three months could, I could be in a different place in my business. And so I'm like kind of recommitting uh, to going after the yearly goal. And so that book, I feel like, is definitely going to help in that awesome. sense. So, yeah. But uh, it could help. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Rob, Rob Russo. I did, uh, you know, he, he had it last week. So I thought I'd order them for us. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. And so I think we should get into it. Advice. This is something that Mel kind of just like, you know, every once in a while, like, guys, just to kind of give you the inner workings into our show, because uh, we do a lot of preparation. We talked about that right before we got on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and it's funny because like every like usually like on a Thursday or usually it's a Thursday, you will get we'll text each other and be like, hey, what do we want to talk about the show? And she's like, well, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. And this time, you know, when somebody wants to yell about something because it's like, this is what we're talking about. And this was definitely a show that uh, Mel had brought up. And so I'm really interested to kind of get her take on where she wants to kind of take this and stuff like that. And she had written some questions down in the caption. If you guys take a look at that, you know, some, and I wrote some of them down, we'll definitely get through some of those, but Mel, why, why this topic, taking advice, giving advice? Yeah. I mean, I think I've been experiencing some of um, struggles in a sense um, with, with, on the giving side and, and having people that's not taking advice. So I kind of wanted to talk about it and, and, and maybe just dive into, um, you know, why it's good to still obviously listen to people and, um, you know, and some of the experiences that I've been having, I've tried to do better with listening and taking advice too. Um, and I just think for business, for relationships, for friendships, um, 
you know, we've all gone through things in our lives, me especially in, you know, like whether it's relationships and, and, you know, everyone's telling you something, but you're, you have to be on your own time sometimes to make certain changes. And I think that there's so many different aspects um, of, of, of examples in our lives where we haven't taken the advice that was given that could have sped things up faster, if that's, you know, um, if that makes sense. But also, I think that, um, you know, it, it, I think we all could do a better job just, just taking it. But I think that there's things like people giving it when they shouldn't give it or giving bad advice or thinking that they um, – no, and 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 who to take advice from? And I think it's it's just a, such a good topic right now with um, things starting to pick back up, with um, things opening up, businesses getting you know events are happening, and all this stuff is it's kind of we're getting back to maybe some type of normalcy. And I think that we should um, start to really consider uh, you know take, taking advice in a lot of different aspects. I don't know. No, I love it. I love it. I mean, there's a quote that one of my mentors says. And he says it all the time and it holds true. And it, when you talked about this, doing about this talk, it, and uh, I, ha I wrote it down and it says, if you would not trade the lives with the person you're taking your advice from, then don't take that advice. Right. right. Like, and it's, and it's, you know, that's kind of like what I think about advice. It's like, you know, there's good sources of advice. There's even bad sources of, of, of advice that you can like go against, right? Like somebody gives you a piece of advice. You're like, that dude, you're not the person I should be taking advice from. I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you do. Um, and so I love that quote. And it's something that I try to remind myself of when I am, especially when you're taking advice from somebody that you don't really know. Right. Yeah. And I think that it's made me think too, with, um, with the, the growth conference and, um, and you know, just 10 X and the things that, that I'm learning through that. Also, is you can find yourself wanting to give advice to people that just don't listen to the advice. And I think that, again, it's not about being right or wrong. I think it's about experiences. And some of us have been through more experiences. And, and, and there's a lot of people out there that have been through way more than we have, right? Of but that, I, that when you, what you find, what I've found too, is when you're trying to give advice to people from your experience, whether it's your profession, <laughs> Through, like through design and marketing and I'm trying to give people advice and they're just not listening and they're just not taking it. Why is it about control? Is it about, um, you know, they want it their way. They, you know, they're stubborn. I don't know. Or, or with, with friendships or relationships like that sometimes it gives you the, it opens your eyes that you need to walk away from situations because when you are trying to give advice that, you know, it, and again, no one's, quote, expert, maybe more in the business sense, you know, that somebody has if they're a financial advisor or if they're, um, you know, and they're, and they're trying to give somebody advice and they're just not listening, you are more of an expert in that field. Um, but even with friendships and relationships, if, if, if you're trying to give your friend advice on certain things and they're just not, they're just not listening, like sometimes you need to learn then to walk away and remove yeah. yourself because that it's, it's like an eye opener, I guess that's what I'm saying is, there's a lot that goes on this topic because, you know, maybe, maybe you realize that people just aren't in, aren't right for you or, or whether it's a friend or a client, you know, it helps you to realize, um, that difference. I, does that make sense? I don't, I don't know if I'm describing it well. No, that makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, when I think about taking advice I, I mean a lot of the times you get unwarranted advice too like yeah have you ever had that happen before where you're like you're not even asking for it but then someone gives it to you and you're like bro i'm not even asking for your advice on this situation i appreciate you taking the time and effort but like i really didn't want it <laughs> and so um but I, you pose a really good question uh in the in in the description here and i want to talk about it so um is knowing how and when to ask for advice. I think I think often or not, especially when pride gets involved, right? And you think like you're in a good spot and you need to ask for advice. That's a difficult thing to do for a lot of people. A lot of people uh, will tend to, I mean, even for me, 
right? Um, it like sometimes like when I think everything's going well in my business and I go to my mentor and I say, hey, what can I be doing better? Right. And that's always like it's like constructive criticism. It's advice. And you never know and because it's it's just like you think you know everything and you really don't. Right. Well, that's what I think I did also post in there is that when we start to um, know more about certain things, we do think that we're an expert sometimes. And then we don't take, you know, we think we can give all this advice and we don't want to hear anything else. Absolutely. Um, and I think that there's been times where I've caught myself lately, especially actually I was having a conversation last night with somebody that um that i was talking that i had something like a conversation kind of um a challenge or a you know like a not a, a, a an argument but i had to actually check myself and 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 i i wanted to hear the other person's side you know and normally, <laughs> normally i wouldn't you know like kind of i'm like no i you know this is what i think and you know i'm i'm right but um not really but uh but I think it. I think wanting to hear and and listen is is how we grow too. And I think that that you don't have to always agree with it. You don't have to take action. You don't have to. You can have the choice to do things, obviously. But at least just listening and um, you know, seeing what the person has to say. I guess. Yeah, I think it goes back to empathy, right? right. Uh, you know, and, and being that in the, like when you're giving advice, that's when you really need to be empathetic. I, I believe because right. especially like, you know, as, as humans, we experience things and we're all going to experience everything in life. You know, you're going to experience pain, you're going to experience joy, you're going to experience happiness. All those things are going to happen. Um, you know, some people it's happened more too. Right. And so, um, but being able to pass that, that's what we want as humans. We want knowledge, right? And so um, when you do run into a person that is giving great advice, uh, you know, sometimes you run into the, 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 the thing where you don't want to take it, right? You know, it's right. You know, it's good advice, but you're not ready for it. Right. Right. I've, right that's what I was saying was, I mean, we've all been in situations where, you know, you're dating somebody and like, oh, break up with him or, oh, you need to leave, you know, leave a situation or this or you, you deserve better. All these things like, you know, that that sometimes it takes and that's a different situation, I feel like, because there's emotion involved, you know, there's so much emotion involved and sometimes, um, you know, a lot of other things. But but I also think that when we look back, we've we've all gotten advice and then, man, why didn't I take that advice sooner? Or, you know, even my ex-husband said things with my website and my Etsy store and he, you know, I sold a bunch of items that were, um, you know, a certain design and he said, stop what you're doing and put everything on Etsy, you know, and it was, and it, and I should have listened to him back then. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, I, I even told him like, and after we got divorced, I was like, man, and I tell this to everybody because it was great advice because it's like, if you're making this much money off five designs, you know, put 500, put a thousand. Um, but it just like it, you know, there were a lot of other factors in it. And absolutely, if I had listened to it, you know, if I had taken that advice back then, um, I'd be selling a lot more, you know, obviously I'd be, I would have started sooner, but, um, but yeah, we look back and, and even advice that I, I've given people, I was just saying that too, to somebody about, um, how I kind of met a couple girls and I was trying to help them, you know, they were younger, they were at a bar, they were drunk, they were sloppy, people were making fun of them. I tried to um, get them in an Uber, you know, and they were like, eh, screw you, you know, I'm living my life. And, you know, and then it turned out to be a pretty bad night and their dads came looking for them and, you know, it is embarrassing and all this stuff. But it's, it's like they didn't want to take my advice, you know, somebody older, somebody trying to, you know, help them. Um, <laughs> Gen Zers. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, there's so many. I, we could give so many examples of of you know uh, times that we've given it, um, and then time and times that we haven't listened. Sure, I could go on for days about that, but I also think, oh uh, yeah, Sean. Sean says sounds like dealing with a teenager. Yeah, <laughs> and only yeah, you know, you can't walk away. You're right. I mean, that's different with parenting, sure, but um, but I think that 
I think there's a lot of, um, a, well, I wanted to say too, is that I've found a couple people lately who I go to for advice. You know, I, business especially, I go to my dad and, and he gives great advice. We just had, um, you know, a conversation about one of my clients and that I, I walked away from. Um, and because of, of that, of them not taking my advice on them, on like some design and marketing aspects, um, when I've been doing this for 12 years and I'm trying to, you know, help and give my opinion and people aren't listening um, and they want to do it their way, they think, you know, they, they're, they know everything or, um, and then, you know, mistakes happened and errors and, um, and having to, and, and, you know, again, it's not embarrassing, but people have to make those mistakes on their own. But when it goes time after time after time after time, and they just don't listen, it starts to get a little bit of, like I said, there's there's something else going on. You know, it is something more, to, in my opinion, of control or of um, needing to, needing it to be their way. And that's, to me, toxic. And I had to leave that situation. And then, you know, they asked if I would help them out. My dad, I called my dad. It was like, I needed advice. I needed to run it by somebody. And, you know, I said, what do I do? And this and this. And we came up with an idea. and 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 to get and more money out of it. But I said, you know what, honestly, I really don't want to. I really, I really don't care about the money. You know, even if I doubled, tripled the money coming in, he's like, just take it, put it in your pocket, pay your car off, you know, just take it. And I just said, you know what, I really don't want to. And he said, well, go with your gut. And sure enough, the next day, something happened. And I, it showed me nothing was going to change. And I called him and I said, hey, I, you know, made my decision. And he said, you he said, well, you know, that was your gut anyway. You know, so it's nice to have those people that you can go to in situations. Um, and one of them is my dad when it comes to business. And I'm really glad that um, that I can go to him for that, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's really important. And it's going to bring up the next point that I wanted to talk about why you're talking about it. And like, you know, you have specific people for specific areas of your life that you go to advice for, you know, and like. Um, I call it, you know, in my self-development, you know, journey, uh, you know, I read a book and I can't remember who said it, save my life, but, um, they talked about, it might've been John Maxwell, if I'm thinking clearly. And I mean, John Maxwell is always a good one, right? Yeah. Um, and he talked about, he talked about having a board of directors and if you think about, and I think I've said this before yeah. where, um, you have to run your life almost like a business. And if you think of the best businesses in the world, right, the most powerful businesses in the world, it's not just one guy or gal at the top making all the decisions. There's a board of directors, right? There's a there's a group of people that are unrelated to the business that are kind of giving advice to where the business should go, right? And so I think about that, like, that's your, your dad is on your board of directors, right? Like, he's does the business side of things or whatever, right? And like, you know, for emotional stuff, it might be mom, right? Or whatever, right? But having a group of people that are close to you that can give you advice is important. But I also think it's important, you know, you can get, I think there's really two forms of advice. There's direct advice where it's like me giving you direct advice right now, right? And then there's indirect advice where you read something, you, you know, you follow a mentor that doesn't even know your name, but they can give you advice as well. And so having some of those indirect versions of advice on your board of directors is super important as well. Yeah. And I think knowing, like you said, maybe there's different people that you go to for different specific advice, like for business advice or for relationship advice. You go to a friend that you think is, um, you know, has a lot more clarity or self-awareness or reflect, you know, that that is going to provide you with what um, you need in a sense. I mean, we don't, we don't always want to go to people that to hear what we want to hear. Right. That's true. That's true. So, we so need to hear. And that's the other thing is maybe people go to people purposefully that are, that give them the advice that they want to hear. And then you're never going to grow. I mean, and that's the hard truth. That's like tough love sometimes when it comes to friendships or family that, um, and for me, I want to go to people that are going to push me, you know, like that are going to tell me how it is. I, I want to hear that. And I want, 
Um, you know, I have I have different friends that are going to be straight <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to be the same way with them. And, you know, it's not I think when I was younger, too, um, I got offended. I was like, oh, that's so harsh or, you know, oh, and, and, and even with my mom or my sister, it's like, well, I don't want to sugarcoat it. You know, there's people that were blunt and honest, you know, like being a certain way. But I hadn't asked for the advice, you know, like they just came out with it. And it was like this hard you know, this harsh um, times. But I think as I've gotten older, I can appreciate it a little bit more um, in that I've I've gotten where I speak my mind more, um, you know, and I try to still be gentle and kind. But I think that I, you know, I, I want to be able to do it because I want um, I want people to do it for me, too. I think it depends, too, like. You know, there's a book I'm about to read, and I pull it up, and it's 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 it's, it's a lot of the colors that we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. so it's, it's called "Surrounded by Idiots," right? The four types, <laughs> of, the four types of human behavior, and I think oh yeah, I think it, I love that. I want to read that. Yeah, so I can't wait to read it. Really, the reason I picked up this book, I didn't even know what it was about. I just saw the title, and I was like, I, I don't, yeah. I don't care what it's about. I'm, I'm picking what it up and reading. Um, but my point is, is that there are a lot of different personalities too. And so like, I might, I'm obviously going to give you advice differently than I would give my wife advice, right? Like, or, um, because of the relationship or the type of personality that person has. Like if that person's always straightforward with me, that's how I'm going to be with them, right? Like, it's like, Hey, you're an idiot. Stop doing that. Or, Hey, that looks great. Keep doing that. And if somebody that's, uh, more sensitive, right? Maybe you have to kind of beat around the bush a little bit before you kind of give him that that advice. And so I've run into that situation a bunch, especially being in the field I'm in, like being in in finance and helping people with with that type of stuff. Like you know, especially if a husband and wife, right? There's there's always two personalities, so the advice hits differently for everybody else. So. Right. But it's also, you know, it's interesting that you say that because that that book will be really interesting to read, too. And I, I know I'd be interested is going back to like the whole color codes and leadership. And so it, it I, I do think that it all is connected and it's it's wanting to be able to to interact and with better with people based on their personalities. So it's just the same thing as leading people that are you, know, you might have to you might have to lead someone. In this way, you know, who's like this. And we, that's what we talked about when we did that podcast. And I think it's really interesting because even in relationships with the love languages, with, you know, the color codes and all that, absolutely. I think that, that the more that you can, um, you know, and I'm just super interested in this because the more that you can connect with different people better, why not do it? Like, why not try to learn about each person and then have a better style when you're interacting with them and giving advice or is a great example to be able um, knowing more of how they're going to take things and um, how you say it, you know, the t how it comes off too. Well, when you're, when you, when you are giving advice, right. Uh, and you are like, like I think of a red, Right. The red is the person that's very like in your face, dominant, like they're just going to let it rip. They might not even take advice from you and they're definitely going to give advice. Right. Because right. they want it their way. But like if if you're a person that like takes the time to understand how other people are thinking, you're going to be a lot more successful in the advice that you give, the things that you do, because you're speaking their language. Right. You're you're kind of talking to them and they're kind of understanding you. Right. And so. Not everybody's like that. Not everybody, you know, most people just want to spout out their viewpoint or their advice. And that should be, that should be it, right? That, that should be the way that everything goes. And so I think, I think you're completely right. Being able to, it's like a pitcher, like in baseball, right? A pitcher doesn't just have one pitch. A great pitcher doesn't just have one great pitch, right? They, they have multiple things that they can do. They have multiple pitches that they can throw at the throw because Sorry to go sports here, but you know you have you have different styles of batters, right? You have guys that you know hit for power. You have guys that you know you know just try to get on base. So you have to do things differently 
in order to get them out. And so it's the same thing with giving advice. Like if, if I just give advice only in one style, like, especially if I'm trying to grow a team, like if I want to bring people into my, into my business or something like that, right. Or whatever it might be, like I'm gonna have different styles of people. And so if I'm just like, this is like, I deliver it this one way, at least in the, you know, in the color code, right. There's four colors, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so if I'm only get if I'm a blue, right. And I'm only projecting in a blue way, right. Like that means 75% of the people aren't going to listen to me. Right. <laughs> right. And so 25% of the people are going to listen to me. That's not, that's not a passing grade. Right. Um, if, if, like how effective will your, will that be? Sure. But I, but just think of that with, with a relationship or just two individuals. Yeah. And you're not knowing um, the person's style. It's like, it, it just, how's it really going to, how's it really going to change or effect, you know, how, what's going to really happen? It's just like talking to a wall. If you're yeah. not, you know, if you don't understand in a sense, um, you know, their, their way of, I mean, it takes work. This is hard work. <laughs> it sounds now that we're talking, you know, now that we're thinking about it and talking about how um, different styles and it, and trying to, individualize that you know how, how you're doing it it's hard yeah it's like whenever you yeah like whenever you're talking to somebody and like you do have that moment of just like it's just disconnection and you're just like you're so frustrated because you're like i know what i'm saying is right and this person <laughs> is completely yeah. fighting me and right. it's because neither side took the opportunity to understand what the other side was actually going through like right. People will often give advice like, oh, I've been through that situation, so I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. But don't take the time to understand how that person's going through it because they're going through it completely different, even though it might be a relationship thing, like a breakup. Like everybody in the world, you know, if you're if you've dated anybody, you've gone through a breakup. Right. But everybody processes that breakup differently right. and needs different advice in that situation. and so. Um, but I think it's, it's that it's under, you know, every situation is different. Every person is different and it's amazing. You have to recognize all that stuff in a short amount of time, like seconds. Right. right. And, if, and if you can't, if you aren't building that skill of recognizing other people and trying to give good advice, you're going to be the guy or gal known as the bad advice person. <laughs> right. I know. You're right. And I was just talking about this last night because I think, in that situation that I had um, last weekend, I got mad because a guy said, bitched, you know, and I think it was a joke and all that, but I got something triggered in me and I just was like, um, yeah, well, like, you know, I said, actually, you know what it was? I was like, oh, here's Sean says, reminds me of Matthew McConaughey talking about his book, Green Lights. I've never read that. Have you read that? No, I've seen it. I've seen a couple people talk about it. Sean, let us know. Have you read it? How good is it? Give us like a one out of 10 if it's a recommended book by you. Uh, but I heard that it's, I heard it's really good. If, it if what we're talking about is in the book, I think we're on, I think we're, I think we're, I think it's, you know, we're on, we're on a good track, but yeah, I actually looked up and obviously there's drinking involved and whatnot. And I looked up and I said, say sorry, say sorry, say sorry. Like I was like, sorry, sorry. You know, I'm kind of like quick, quick, say sorry, say sorry. You know, and I'm giving the advice like, fix it. Say, sorry. You know, you said you called her a bit, you know, and even if it was a joke or not, and, and, and I thought I was absolutely right, you know, and I'm like, just say, sorry, you know, like fix it and it'll all go away. And he didn't. And he was then saying stuff to me and it got into like, it got heated. And I just said, you know, not going to fly with me, not going to fly with my girlfriends. And we got into this thing that, and then next thing, you know, Anyway, I think he said, oh, I, I did apologize. And I was like, no, actually, you didn't. But you just didn't take the advice. Like, why didn't you? And I was more mad. So I was like, why didn't you just take the advice? You know, just squash it. Like, say sorry. And I don't know if it was just this. Um, let me say, I haven't read it, but it sounds impressive. Okay, great. Well, well maybe we should uh, we shall read it, and then we'll talk yeah. about it. Um, but then after the fact, it was funny because then I was getting mad. And it was just, I want to say mad. I was just this challenge kind of thing. And, um, 
And I stopped. And actually, the, and, and he stepped in and was like, I was like, what am I doing? You know, like, why am I getting like worked up about this? Like, you know, I think you're a, a, you're fun. You're a nice person. You're this. We're friends. And I'm just like, here's why I was upset. You know, and then we actually talked about it. And, we, you know what I mean? We kind of like came out of that little thing. And I'm like, I just don't understand why you didn't say sorry. You know, like, and I think it was this challenge, this battle of, you know, I'm just going to do it because I'm going to cave and do what you want me to do. You know, like we like actually talked about it. But it's just funny. It's kind of funny how how um, w the reasoning behind. Like I, I wanted to know the reasoning behind it and have that conversation. And sometimes you can't do that, or people can't. You know, one person wants to, the other person does it. But when two people want to stop and say, "The hell are we doing?" <laughs> like, you know, that's that's the best case scenario. Like if when both people realize that, hey, we need to we we need to figure this out, right? But like, it's interesting you brought up, like, at the beginning part, like, so much of emotion was involved in that conversation, and you weren't able to see his point of view, or or he wasn't able to see your point of view, and it, it's like, you know, it's really, oh, man, I can, because I can think about some moments where I did not take advice well, because I was, I was in the moment, right, I was heated, and, you know, being an Italian guy, right? I can get very heated. And so like, sometimes I'll get super mad. Like <laughs> I can think about it right now. Like I'll be in the car and some, like, I'm usually a nice guy. Most people know me as a nice guy, right? I'm very smiley, but if you step over the boundary, like oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to check you, right? Like <laughs> I'm going to check you. Um, and this guy like just did something stupid in the car and I just went off. And Megan, like, as I'm yelling, she's like, you know, trying to say something to me. And I'm just like, not even listening to what she has to say. But then like, after the fact, I was like, all right, now I can emotionally detach. And like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have said what I said, or, you know, gestured the, <laughs> the way I gestured. But like, I think that's really hard in relationships, especially because there is so much emotion involved, right? Like there's, yeah. It can just definitely be a little bit dragged. Yeah, and you know, I, I wrote something down because I wanted to bring it up, but I saw something in a movie or a TV show. I, I like it, Sean. Yeah, his comment book club. I think that would be it. Would be the millennial good. the millennial book club. Keep me accountable for reading my keeping my goal of reading books like after you. Um, but I think that there was something that I saw, and I started doing it in my last relationship, which was when something kind of got heated, and you you realize that. You realize that you're dis that you're kind of disconnected and you're not um, it, it's not gonna like get resolved or you're both kind of at, at, at extremes was I, was a timeout and I forget where I saw it I'd have to think it might have just oh it might have been how it, how I met your mother and I don't even watch the show I've only watched like three episodes but I think that's what it was from and I think what one of the couples had just done like hey timeout like you can, you call a timeout. And I think that at, in the relationship, you have to agree that when someone calls a timeout, you literally like, it's over for, yeah. for the time, for the time being, you say timeout. And for me, I've also needed like, just sometimes like a hug, you know, my love, my, my, my physical touch, my love language. So sometimes it's just to cool down or like, you know, and I know it's not to get into um, um, relationships and emotion and stuff. But, but that's kind of what, oh yeah, emotions drive impulses. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Something triggered that, that, that in me because he, he called my friend a bitch and I was like, you know, it, it upset me, it just something happened and I absolutely went to a 10. I, I blew up instantly and that I, I, sh I could have done a better job. But, but then it was like, say sorry, say sorry, and he wasn't. And then, and to him, and this was a, a good conversation, like a good example because he said, oh, it was a joke. I was just joking. And I said, and, and, and I did, and this was a, my advice to you. It's not a joke. It's not a word to use as a joke. Like moving forward, I don't like, like I like do not call, do not say it to me. Do not say it to my friends. Like it's not a joke. And, and, and most women aren't going to think it's funny. Like even if, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, and I know that, and maybe it's just me. I don't know if there's any women listening and like commenting. I mean, to me, it just wasn't a joke. And that was where I said, let me give you some advice for the future. 
like I wouldn't, I would never, I wouldn't do that ever again. <laughs> like I just, you know, like I wouldn't do that. Um, and, and because again, like you're maybe there that it's going to happen and there's not going to be that person that can then go, wait, time out. Let's talk about this. Like it could, it could have been to a girl whose boyfriend or husband was there and you get punched in the face. You know what I mean? Like, or the girl punches you in the face. Like, so I, I think that it was good that I had that conversation after the fact, because I was like, Hey, you didn't take my advice to say, sorry, but maybe you'll take my advice. to never <laughs> like, like, here's why, you know, it's just, I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, when it comes to advice, like, and especially like in an emotionally driven situation, like, and like, I'm talking about this and obviously I violated this advice that I'm about to give. <laughs> um, but that it all makes sense here when, when I talk about, uh, when I, when I show something at the end of the show that we're not going to give away yet for people that haven't watched the show yet, but, um, it, it you know, going back to that, just like trying to give somebody advice in, a, in an emotional state and then being like, you know, have you ever given somebody advice where you're more, um, I guess, I don't want to say devoted to the situation, um, but you're more in, invested, invested right, in the right. situation than they are. And you're like, they're like, Billy, I don't care. Like, right, it's, right. it's like, why are it's you going to the, you. it's something in you that you, um, yeah, but, but then it, it offended me, but it didn't offend somebody else, the other right. person that was supposed to be offended. Right. Like, you know, and then like, I think about like when I get into those situations and something that I have been doing and it, somebody said, said something to me one time and we, we were arguing about it. And it was like, like the timeout situation. It wasn't a relationship. It was, well, it's a real friendship. So it's still a relationship, but, um, he, he kind of said, just, he didn't say timeout. He said, listen, this isn't the hill I'm willing to die on. Right. And I, when he said that it made perfect sense. And so when I'm, you know, in a, a heated dis discussion with Megan or with anybody, I try to think about that. And like, I'll say like, this, this is not worth arguing about. Like right. I'll, I'll verbalize that. They're like, you know what? This isn't worth arguing about. Like this isn't the hill I'm willing to die on. Let's figure out how to make this situation better. Right. Um, and it's served me well up to this point, but previously I, like I said, I, I'm kind of like you one, zero to 10 in, in a heartbeat. Um, so, but, uh, but I think it could be tough when somebody's more, when you're more, emotionally invested in what's going on than the person you're trying to give advice to. Right. Right. Or, you know, or you're, I don't know. Um, you know, it was funny was after the fact, I think I, I, I don't know. It's a long story, but I, I want to say, I, I don't want to go, I don't want to switch topics, but I do. Okay. What does Sean say? If it's a joke, you better know the person you said it to very well. Yeah. And that's the other thing I didn't, you know, like that person didn't know me or my friend. And I think you're right. Oh, that's was, even worse. Yeah. If it was a, I mean, did like, like maybe seen three or four times, but not a friend. If it's, you're right. I think that if it was a, a you know, um, and not to harp on this, if it was somebody that um, was doing it in a joking, loving, haha, you know, that way, yeah, it definitely wouldn't have been the same. But I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. But I wanted to bring this up because it's similar to the to the uh, timeout, and I know that it's it's. Um, it's not necessarily about taking advice, but I want to bring this up. Um, I, you know, my like relationships. Um, there was a couple times where I, so, you know, you come and you're like, "Oh, my day, I had this. I'm so stressed," and you're like, "Blah blah 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 blah." Mm -hmm. So I think right there that somebody wants. Um, I, I'm a problem solver. I want to solve the problem. You know, it sounds like you have a problem. You're complaining about something, or you're you're upset, or you're venting. And there were times where I was giving my advice and I was, you, like you said, um, more vested, more, more passionate. Like you want to help this person, um, cause you care about them and you're like, oh, well you should do this. And, um, what about this? And you know, you gotta, you gotta say this. And, and there were a couple times that it happened where you were, you know, he was like, I, sometimes I just want to vent. Like I don't yeah. want advice. And I, that actually 
was hard for me because I'm like, but, 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 but I'm, I'm, you're, you're coming to me. You're telling me these things. Uh, it's like, we're, let's solve the problem. I'm a problem solver. Let's fix it. You know, let's make it better. And for, to hear somebody say, I just, I don't really want, I don't want to really solve it. I just want you to be there. I just want you to listen. I just want to vent. I want to get it out. And I just want you to listen. I'm, I was like, dang, you know what? That's wow. I mean, like, I'm glad that he said that. And, and, and then, so moving forward, I said, okay, well then again, my problem solving brain, you know me, I'm like solving, like trying to think. So moving forward, why don't you say off the bat, hey, I don't really want to find this, like, a, a, you know, I don't really want to solve this. I just want to vent. Can you just listen to me? Or I say, hey, um, do you want, do you want me to just listen? Should I give you a solution or should I give you, um, should I just listen? And right, that changed so much because it was causing conflict because I was giving my advice, didn't want advice, you know, and it was causing a lot. So then to say, you know, hey, um, do you want advice? Do you want me to give you advice? So, so, oh yeah, Brandon. Hey, Brandon, it's true. Venting is important psychologically wise. Yeah, absolutely. But I think that that's the other thing is we think that people are venting um, because they want advice and they don't always want it. And I think that that's certainly, Sean says, this sounds like a convo I have with my wife when she's finishing. I ask, how can I help? Absolutely, Sean. See, you're so awesome, Sean. And that's where I had to learn you know, I had to learn to to say, how can I, you're right, how can I help? What can I do? Um, do you want it? Do you want me to give you my advice or my opinion? And I think that we jump right into, and I'm, I'm you know, I did it. And, and that's why um, I didn't even think to bring this up when we were talking about it. And, and I was watching something online and it was a couple or it was something, a, a podcast or something that a couple does. And what they do is they say that after they, they spew their stuff, it says, he, they say, do you want comfort or a solution? And that's exactly what I'm saying is, do you want, do you want me to give you advice or do you want me to comfort you? And I think that right there could actually solve a lot of <laughs> problems, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I do that all the time. I, you know, uh, you know, uh, the book that I just got done reading, Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference, he talks about how and what are calibrated questions. So it, it causes the other person to think about, you know, what, you know, think about a response. And so like, I do that a lot. Like if I'm meeting somebody for the first time, like if it's a networking thing, right. And, and the only reason I bring this up is because you were, you asked a calibrated question or Sean asked a calibrated question. Um, how can I help you? Like, what can I do to help you? And that, makes that other person verbalize what they want. And right. so it could be like, you know, like you could just spiel a bunch of stuff at me and be like, well, how can I help you? You know, what kind of advice are you looking for? And if you say, I'm not looking for advice, I'm just looking to event. A no or a negative response is not always the bad thing. Like if I said, like, just like I said right there, like, you know, and then you said, no, like, I don't want like, advice I want you to listen I've gotten the answer I want right and, you and don't, now you don't then go and give the advice that yes, you wanted yes. and then it starts an argument of, yeah it's like well I didn't want your advice like and that advice that you just gave me sucks right like it's so that's you know, that's, I, a, that's a really good point and I just want to say that I don't want to interrupt but you know looking back at the at the um you know, the interactions that I had with, for the business. Everybody's yeah. having discussions with their wife. I'm, uh... yeah, hey, it's good. You know, I think, I think it's good if you can have those things because it solves, I think it would solve a lot of problems by saying, you know, how can I help? Can't, oh, you know, but, but what I could have said in situations was, you know, maybe preface with people who, who have a hard time taking advice. And I think that, you know, right off the bat, once you give someone advice and they don't take it well, or they don't react well, you know that they, ha they have a hard time, that maybe the next time, and I could have probably done a better job with this with, with my business client, was saying, hey, can I give you some advice from, from my experience? Instead of you know, continuously doing it the way that I was wasn't working, um, you know, I think then by me saying, can I give you some advice about this? 
then it lets the person say, yes, I'll listen, or no, I really don't care. And then that way I go, okay, screw you. Or, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I mean, yeah. Or, hey, okay, no problem. Um, but I think that that, I think it's a good, um, you know, I think it's interesting that we we kind of stumbled on to this topic of of asking or uh, maybe it's your book about the deal, you know, the idiots. <laughs> maybe it's in there um, in that uh, better ways to go about giving advice um, by by saying, can I can I please give you my advice? Like welcoming or asking if I can give it versus just giving it. I don't know. Well well, I mean, I, I I agree because like if you're not asking, like like if you don't ask, you don't know. Like you you don't know how the other person's feeling. And so like, you know, kind of what um what Sean was talking about earlier, um, you know, it 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 if you're not asking, then you you can't really know what that person's thinking. But like you were like like you were saying, we assume that we know how that person's feeling. We assume that we have good enough advice to give them. And we assume that they want to actually listen to what we have to say. Sometimes, and, none of <laughs> none of, sometimes, sometimes none of those are true. And, you know, it's, you know, when you said like something that really just triggered a thought, you said like, you know, sometimes that person, by the way they react to getting advice, um, you know, sometimes they're not good at receiving advice. And I think you can not only, especially if you know this person, like if it's somebody that you've worked with before and you can just look at their, like if you know this person, right, you can look at their life and you can see how, how they've navigated a lot of their life already to know whether or not they take advice. Right. Because if they did, they probably wouldn't be in the situations. Like if you're, you know, not to bring up divorce, but like if you meet somebody that's been divorced four times, right? They probably never have taken any type of. They've probably never taken any relationship advice, and if they had, they probably wouldn't be in the situation that they're in. But or they just never listen, or something along those lines. Like you said before, like something is missing, right? Like there's there's not a receptor there to take the advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that it that it you can learn a lot about people from how they receive that or they don't receive it. You know, if they receive it well, you're like, okay, they're maybe self-aware, self-reflective, want to um, grow and, and take constructive criticism. And then the people that can't, um, you know, maybe there's something also to be said that th that they're people that won't change too. Um, nothing's yeah. going to change if they're, you know, like the, the repetitive not taking advice or, um, or not even wanting to hear any of it, um, is somebody that feels they don't want to, to change or be better. Um, and that's a sign, I think, you know, if you, um, off the bat and there's so many things that we ignore and it's not just relationships, it's with business because you could get into business with somebody that's like that, or you could hire somebody and, you know, your employee. And I think that if, you know, people don't realize that when their, their boss is giving them this advice, it's more than likely what they should be doing because it you know they're an, they're the employee and they're the role and their expectations and and all those things and if you don't then it's like oh i got fired why <laughs> well i got broken up with why well you know like listening to to the advice it's just different you know different um situations but um yeah yeah I wrote in the comment section uh, what was the worst piece of advice that, uh, or the millennial did anyways, uh, what's the worst piece of advice you have ever got? Um, what's the worst piece of advice you ever got? Me? Oh. <laughs> um, oh my God. Uh, I don't know. Oh gosh. I'd have to really think about it. Um, I know mine. <laughs> oh yeah. As Sean said, um, doing things, yet expecting different results. You know, if people are, di didn't learn from divorces or situations, absolutely. Isn't that the definition of insanity? <laughs> yeah. Doing the exact same thing over yeah. and over again uh, yeah. and, and expecting a different result. Yeah. yeah. What's your worst advice? My worst advice. Uh, I, I would have to say 
it would it, there's a couple of different versions um but the big one is probably going to college <laughs> <laughs> just what? because or going to college for the thing that i went to college for not maybe necessarily going to college but maybe taking a, the advice of my advisor right the the teacher that i was talking to uh and ex taking the first semester kind of explore a couple different topics mm -hmm. um you know way <laughs> brandon way too many way too many bad pieces of advice right yeah um and then i would say you know maybe the advice that i got for when it came to you know managing money and stuff like that at an early age uh, or the lack of advice i also think that's a problem too is lack of advice mm -hmm. right and not and i think that kind of talks about like one of the questions that you asked knowing when when we need advice mm -hmm. right so did, did you come up with a, a bad piece of advice for, for that you could think of no because <laughs> you probably didn't listen to I it probably have had you know bad advice um Probably I'm going to, I'm going to reach out on a limb. Most definitely probably had. Some no. Problems. Yeah. And I think, I guess it's just that, I guess I'm thinking of something that I then followed the bad advice. Like I kind of feel like I've gotten bad advice, but, um, I think maybe I've gone with my gut or, um, you know, like, yeah, like Sean said, there's a lot of good advice that I didn't listen to. Yeah. And I think that there's good advice we do, we do and don't listen. And there's bad advice that we do and don't listen to. I mean, I had somebody give me advice to just, suck it up and stay living in an apartment where somebody was playing a grand piano and ruining my life. I mean, literally like driving me crazy. And I was like, no, that's bad advice. You know, <laughs> like, and I absolutely moved. Um, but, but I was thinking too, that, um, that I think that we learn, we start to learn when we've had bad advice or good advice or feel like we need to go and ask for advice a lot. And that we, when the people that were that are giving us the advice is what we thought anyway, we start to trust ourselves a little bit more. And I think that it's also trusting our ourselves and our gut. Um, you know, like the advice that I went for my dad, I knew deep down it was just like almost this validation hearing it from somebody else too. That we start to uh, learn that we don't always need to go to other people. Like we have to trust our our own advice to ourselves too. Yeah. What did, what did Sean say here? He said, uh, if if the rent was cheap enough, I'd stay. Oh I don't know. God. I don't know if I could deal with a grand piano. Uh, no, it, was it, below you? it was more than a three bedroom house with an office that I'm in right now. So it wasn't, that was the other thing. Um, no, but I, I don't know what your millennial meme is, but, um, but I saw, I, I had to share something and I hope it's not what you found, but it says ask whole. A person who constantly asks for advice yet does the opposite of what you've told them. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna post it on our on our page because I know it's not. It wasn't really a meme, but it was. Um, well, it, it's funny because, like, uh, you know, if you don't know the answer, obviously ask and and get the advice that you need. But if you are constantly asking the same questions over and over and over again, right? That's like that person that especially if you're getting the advice from the same person like they're going to be like bro are you even like listening to me right. i'm not going to waste my time to keep you giving this advice um but yeah there's there are those people that are like perpetual like people that just ask for advice because they just want i don't know maybe like to for you to feel sorry for them or you know to i don't know but i've never been that person like if i don't know like I ask and then I try and then I try to learn, right? Like, uh, you know, there might be little nuances about what I just asked. But like, well, you know, how do you do this little thing that's on the grander scale of things, right? And so, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we all know those people that are, um, that, that definitely do that. Yeah. And I think just, um, I think being more aware, like being more aware of, um, that you know i put in there too that a lot of people have more experience than us i think i think that even if they've it was a different situation like you said we all go through through things differently 
more more than likely people who are older who have gone through a lot more than we have can give pretty good advice i would think um you know then they've seen a lot more they've seen their kids go through things they've seen their you know like the generations they've just seen more i guess i don't know and experienced more um but you know i think uh being able to open oh listen peggy hi you always listen to your mama good job billy there you go um but yeah and i think yeah you have the people that you um that you want to listen to and i think you know the people that that you don't and trying to stick with the ones that give good advice absolutely yeah i mean like i said when you do find that person that gives good advice and you know it's not always you know it, it is experience i think it is self development knowledge opening up your mind i think you know so that's a great question so what is good advice to you um, I think good advice is stuff that makes you that that makes you qu like really think question it's constructive criticism it's um it's something that it, it's somebody that wants to make you better and wants to help you I think ultimately um, and it, it solve I don't want to say like to solve a problem but um, it's to kind of get you out of what you're, or make a change. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I like that answer. I, you know, I think good advice. And if anybody's watching, what are, what, are, what is good advice to you? Let us know in the comment section. I'd love to see some of these answers. Um, but good advice for me is, is getting me to stop my original thought. Right. So like if I'm thinking about something, especially if it's, I'm emotionally uh, driven, like in that situation, if it gets me to stop and think about that, that advice for a second and change my thought process, like I know it's good advice. If it's something that I just run right through, um, I know it, it, it might not be the great advice that I'm needing at that moment. And right. that's another thing that like it might be really good advice, but it might be the wrong moment for that advice. Right. Um, and so like good, like also good advice that you know, like you said, you know it's coming from a person that cares, right? That like is engaged. Results, I guess that was what I was trying to say. Like wants the same result as you. Wants to progress. Wants you. Wants to have a better outcome. Like you know, Sean said, advice leads to personal growth, right? Um, and Peggy, it, this is. I think that's probably the best answer. Peggy, <laughs> advice is given to avoid issues that are unforeseen to you. So right. I mean, it's. Through, I, you know, I would see it's probably through people's experience or knowledge or education. But, um, but if somebody has the same end goal as you and the results that you know, um, which I would think that are positive. Um, I saw something that was like, you know, don't take advice from about like re relationship advice from someone who's never been in a successful, healthy relationship. How can they really give advice if they've about you know being in a successful if they've never been in one? So I'm not saying that flipping it to what's bad advice, but um, knowing who's giving it is another thing too. Yeah. Well, I love, I love all the TikTok videos of all the financial advice out there that I get from all the teeny boppers uh, because they know a lot about finance. And yes, I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at that because it's just like, I'm like, you're taking in, uh, all this financial advice from a kid that hasn't even turned 18 yet. Yeah, and I think I think that there's I, I actually it was funny because I know it is your week, right? Yes. Okay. So I know, but I was trying to like find little things that to post as little images and I keep wanting to share some of them, but I don't want to ruin it if it's yours. <laughs> but um <laughs> no, I'll, I'll wait until after. Yes. And so with with I think it's a great segue to the part of the show where we pop up the Millennial meme of the week. Millennial meme. Teeny boppers, your mom said. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's something that I'm she said. I'm glad that everybody who's watching is commenting too, because we love to. People get receptive with. Yeah, she said uh, people have to be receptive without being defensive. Right. Yep. And so without further ado, it is my week, 
the millennial meme. I think it's a pretty good one. It was the very first one I found, and I was like, this is perfect. Um, so here it is. <laughs> when I'm giving advice and I start to feel advised on my own advice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a person kind of like deeply thinking about what they're talking about. Then all of a sudden, like eyes are wide open, kind of like retrospective. But I, I think that like is very... Oh, yeah. Very, very, uh, I think it's very, most people do that, right? You start, especially like if you get in that groove, like if you're giving advice and somebody's really receptive and you're just hitting them with stuff and then all of a sudden like, man, I need to listen to that. Like I should have, I should have recorded that. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. so. Uh, but that's funny. Cause the one now I can share, it says, if you want to drive a Lambo then stop taking advice from Toyota drivers. <laughs> You know, I think it's all about perspective. I think there was something too that that said, um, you know, ask advice from people that you want to be like, or you know, people that that you think obviously are, um, you know, have have the knowledge, and you want you want to be like them. That's the people that could you know give uh, give that advice. I think, um, but yeah. I think too, I think we I I really I'm glad that we went off on a couple. Of a, a couple of things because I learned actually a, a lot <laughs> that I'm going to take away from this about not just, you know, when we're saying like about asking for advice or, but, but, um, but how to maneuver, I guess. Um, Ferrari is the goal, Mel. Yeah, Peggy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's Glenn's favorite car. So yeah. that's, that's the goal for them. Yes. There you go. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, it, it's just giving advice, taking advice. It's difficult. It's not easy. Um, that's why w when you do find good advice, you definitely need to hold on to that and take, and, and take, take, take the advice for what it is. So, um, but right now that we've moved past the millennial meme is the other time of the show where Mel gets to have her, her moment in the sun. So it is Mel's moment. Uh, and so ever at the end of every show, Mel gets to leave us with a, a piece of advice, a piece of advice. Mel, here we go. You get to leave us with a piece of advice that we can take on to this weekend to have a really successful weekend with our family and friends. So what do you got for us? I do give advice every week. <laughs> um, well, it is so nice out um, that, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think with this advice, I, I was just getting into it and I wanted to save it for the, for my Mel's moment. Um, I think I've, I've, what I've learned and what I'm going to take, take our advice here um, is to do a better job asking to give advice um, and how you can, like, you know, Sean saying, how can I help? Um, what can I do? Um, I think that that could solve a lot of problems for a lot of us in the communication side is just, um, you know, instead of giving, you know, I, instead of just giving it, I, you know, I think, I think we could do a better job this weekend when we get into situations is saying, Hey, can I give you some advice or, Hey, do you want to hear advice? Um, and maybe taking that extra step before we, um, you know, before we give it, um, ask if somebody wants it. And I think that would solve some, problems <laughs> Sean, Sean said he's gonna drink that's drink some advice. beer and and, and and relax that's his, his advice for this relax. weekend yes absolutely um tonight I'm having um some girlfriends over I haven't seen in a while we're just gonna probably drink um some wine and relax but there's gonna be some advice given absolutely Ooh. tonight I know when we get these you know we have our girl time you know we talk there is there is okay. advice given, so I am I am going to, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen. I'm going to try to give some good advice, take some good advice, um, you know, and and everything that we that we talked about today, I'm gonna I'm gonna use tonight. Well, good, and uh, and if I'm I'm sure, are they coming over your place? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure the spread's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go so I can go get some food at my. You know. uh, the the I'm sure there's gonna be a charcuterie board. I'm um, the whole nine. 
There will be. <laughs> and I'm not making it though. Somebody else is. So we'll see. We're gonna. We'll. we'll I'll show pictures to see if. See how good this is. But um, do you guys have plans this weekend? Um. So tomorrow, it's a. We're gonna start some yard work. Hey. Um. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, but tonight, um, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hey, like an intervention. There uh, has there, been, it is. There has been the, some advice given that maybe come to Jesus have, meeting is what we, we call it. So we're gonna try a different, you know, we're gonna try a different style of advice, maybe. No. So, but uh for, fast forward today, um probably just gonna hang around the house and maybe watch a movie. Uh this is usually what we do on a Friday night. Oh. Is, Party, party central here at the Zerilla house. Uh, <laughs> so maybe I think actually, uh, um, uh, there's a brewery right down the street, uh, fetish brewery company just released two beers. So I'm going to go check them out and see what they got. So, and then one of these days we had to come, we had to come down to rubber soul. So have to come get your planner. I know, I know. So, um, but anyways, guys, we hope that you enjoyed the show today. Uh, about giving advice. So maybe you're going to be giving advice later. Maybe you're going to be receiving advice later. So make sure you take some of the things. Like I said, we're not experts. We're just giving you our advice on how to do these things. <laughs> it's so, just our advice. It's just our advice. Just take it. It's fine. Right. Even if you don't want it. Um, <laughs> but anyways, guys, like I said, hopefully you enjoyed today's show. If you did, let us know in the comment section, go over, like our page. That will really let us know that you liked what you heard today. Uh, and we would really appreciate that. So, but anyways, guys, enjoy your weekend. Have a good one. And we'll see you next week, 12 o'clock, for another episode of Millennial. So have a good weekend, guys.